and welcome to the All the Hats We Wear podcast. This is a show that will help you, the entrepreneur, learn the time management skills you need to be joyful, productive, and fulfilled in all areas of life. I'm your host, life coach and productivity expert, Scott Snow. This is episode 48. If you follow this podcast, you've seen that there that I've had a bunch of different guests on. I've had about 20 guests on in the last couple of weeks, and uh, it's been a great joy. I mean, talking to all these different experts about different things and different specialties, it's been really fun. And I'm sure if you've heard it, you've gotten a lot from it too. So this is the first uh, time I've done a episode myself in a long time. I'd like to focus on something that's been, um, I've been thinking about a lot, and that's how to consume the news. Of course, during these days of pandemic, of the pandemic, and you know, with everything going on in the news, a lot of people I've been talking to basically just say they avoid the news completely, just as a self-survival mechanism. But what I've been thinking about is that with the right approach, you can still consume the news and have it be productive and creative and help feed your mission and your purpose just as well as uh, if times were more positive. Here's my example. I have the newspapers of about four or five days worth of reading. Every day I read the Boston Globe and the Wall Street Journal and occasionally the New York Times. So I wanna show you an example of how I can derive positive things and inspirational things that will really help me from the news. Um, I do find that reading the news is a lot easier to stay positive than watching the news on TV. Maybe it's a visual thing or I'm not exactly sure why. And also I'm kind of an old school analog guy. So I like to have the physical paper over reading it on the uh, laptop, which I can't stand. I find it takes me four times longer to read a newspaper on my laptop or a device. I'm sure there'll be that day coming where there will be no more newspapers you can get delivered, but until then, I'll have it delivered. I like to scribble in it, I like to make notes. So I'm gonna go through uh, these newspapers and, and just tell you what I'm getting from each one. And you'll get to see all the things I'm sort of tracking and what I'm using it for. And maybe you can apply a similar approach. So this is how I have it done. Uh, I've got my little notes that I'm going to explain to you here. And usually my daily thing is to, when I find an article, I usually just mark it. And then at the front of the paper, I'll put which page has some kind of a marking. So in this paper, I have a, a recipe that I saved because I do like to cook. And that's one of my roles is to be a chef. Uh, amateur, of course. And this is a potato, chickpea, and cauliflower salad with tahini dressing. That sounded pretty good, so I flagged that. Also, I have an article about the new Rolls-Royce Ghost, a very high-end luxury car that is kind of inspirational to me. Like, I, I'm not going to get one, but I like hearing about it and all the fancy stuff it does. And they talked about wokeness, that word wokeness, where it's a state of being aware especially of social problems such as racism and inequality. But that idea of wokeness, you use this car, you're gonna be woke. That's inspirational. Next is a, uh, I flagged a picture that was titled More Magic. And it had some guy in a black tuxedo with a black top hat like a magician. And he was just jumping through the air, flying through the air and it just said more magic. And that just made me think, you know, we need more magic in this world. Just a little inspirational picture. Now this one, look look at all the stuff I've got here. This is the Wall Street Journal weekend edition, which I find to be very creative. And I have one, two, three, four, five, eight pages of this that are flagged with some kind of a article that I liked. There's an article about a new book about James Beard, who created the uh, whole fine dining. You know, you can, when you have a... Uh, fancy restaurant, the best chefs get approval from the James Beard Foundation, I guess. So that reminds me of quality and the best of the best. And that's always interested, interesting to me. 
This has an article by Dan Ariely, who is a uh, like a psychiatrist who has a lot of interesting takes in this little thing. It's like a Q&A with the audience, but he talks about how to set the right price for your product. He talks about productivity and he talks about rituals. So all stuff that are directly related to me, my business and my role as being a productivity expert. Also, there's an article about Matisse, the artwork of Henry Matisse or Henri Matisse and how his paintings often have this mood of happy simplicity there's an article about poetry of William Carlos Williams that interests me. An article about innovation and how this person said innovation requires imitation. There was a quote that I liked about fly fishing by Norman McLean, who wrote the book, um, The River Runs Through It, which starts off being a lot about fly fishing. And it's the quote is, it is not fly fishing if you're not looking for answers to questions. So it brings that mindfulness and that purpose idea. There's a recommended book in this article uh, called Fallacy. So got to read that. That sounds fascinating. And the author of a children's book, Mo Willems, who talked about creativity and his process and how creativity requires being vulnerable. And that, I find that to be very true also. And there's an article in here about New York City embracing chaos and anarchy. And I'm kind of interested in anarchy writers and anarchy for some reason. In the Boston Globe magazine today was a list of top prep schools. So maybe I'll want to um, try to get some of my time management materials into the best prep schools around Massachusetts. Now I've got a list. Here's a couple articles about psychology. One of them was about hypocrites, how we're all hypocrites in a way, and another article about undecided voters and all the psychology involved there. Here's a couple things about a writer named Susan Minot and her writing process. Always interested to hear what people's processes are about writing or creativity, artwork, leadership. And there's a book recommendation, The Daily Stoic, which I think is on the top 10 list now by Ryan Holiday. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's an article about murder hornets. I'm always curious about murder hornets for some reason. I tend to like villains. <laughs> Here's an obituary about Lawrence Sykes who was an artist and his art was inspired by haunting experiences. That sounds interesting. An obituary about Derek Mahan, a poet who wrote about his inner demons. Again, I seem to gravitate towards that dark side. Article about making cocktails using cider. Love that. And recipe about Korean meatballs. So I've got my interests and I've got my roles about 20 roles. And pretty much whenever I flag something that's related to that role, I, I immediately capture it. Here's an article about Deepak Chopra on how to disagree as an adult. And an article about Rihanna's business. And for some reason, I really like Rihanna. I find her to be very creative and very strong. And I, so I watch for anything that she does. Here's an article about work-life balance from Microsoft Teams, that program. And it helps to talk about the uh, demarcating the workday for people. Since we used to have the commute time that at least we could turn things off and have a little bit of a end to the day, both going in and, and coming out. Now we don't have that. So I think this article was about how Microsoft was trying to instill that, trying to focus on the wellness of employees and have the beginning of the day be a little bit more about preparation and getting organized. And then the end of the day about being a, a focus of reflection. Here's a recipe for Italian wedding soup. That looks good. Another article about work-life balance by Sheryl Sandberg, one of the key figures in women in the workplace. 
And she's talking about how companies have to rise up to the moment or they're going to lose a lot of talented women in the workforce. Another article about work-life balance, about being transparent with your spouse and at work with your employees and, and team and boss. Article in the Globe about how women are leaving the workforce in droves because of the burden of childcare. And so that's a trend I'm following as well, being a productivity expert. And lastly, we have a couple articles in the Wall Street Journal from today or yesterday of how to pitch products during the time of COVID. That's helpful. And a CEO, a CEO story about dual CEOs, two CEOs that share the job and their process for that. I'm always interested in stories about leadership. Usually, you know, and I have a whole podcast episode, I'm trying to remember what number it is, that's all about scrapbooking. And when I take these articles and I usually just clip them quick, I have an electric buzzer paper cutter that just, um, I can buzz it in a flash. And then I put it in three ring binders in plastic sheets. So I have those uh, because I always find that these articles that are of interest come too fast. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make breakfast. I'm trying to do this. I don't have time to sit there and analyze what I want to do. So it's a stepwise progression. It's curating these ideas. And then eventually they'll show up in a podcast or blog post or just for my own betterment to improve my skills. So this is my approach to consuming the news. I really don't do too much of the news in electronic form, but I focus on having the newspaper and it really works for me. So I hope you have some kind of a system that uh, you don't have to just shut out everything. Find a way like, and I really use that as sort of a mantra in the morning. I have my coffee, I have the newspapers there, have a little breakfast. And my focus truly is how can I be helpful? What can I do to help the situation? But you have to learn the problems first. So this is a way that really works for me. Let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me. You're meant to do great things. If you want to be an innovator and visionary, you have to manage your busy life like one. The All the Hats We Wear planner is the planner for the future. I want to give you a free month of the planner to try out for yourself. Nothing will slip through the cracks anymore. When you use the All the Hats We Wear planner, you'll have everything you need at your fingertips. All of your goals, a vision statement, a list of daily habits, and a checklist to track your progress. Key information for the small and large projects on your plate. Daily sheets to clarify your top outcomes for each day. A week at a glance section to plan for the coming weeks. And much more. The All the Hats We Wear planner will be your roadmap to a more joyful, productive, and fulfilling life. To claim your free month so you can see for yourself how it will streamline your busy life, visit allthehatsweware.com.